Hi, and welcome to another in a series of technology-focused tips brought to you by K2 Enterprises. My name is Tommy Stevens, and for the next few moments, I'll have the uh, privilege of showing you how, you how you can utilize Excel's terrific Power Query feature to split data into multiple columns. Now, I certainly recognize that there are a number of approaches that we could take uh, to accomplish this goal. For example, we could use Excel's Text-to-Columns Wizard, which is an old uh, tool that's been available uh, for many, many years in the application. We could use the relatively new Flash Fill tool, which was added to Excel 2013, and both of those do a perfectly fine job of splitting a single column of data into multiple columns. The challenge that we face, however, with text to columns and Flash Fill is that they do not provide to us, let's call them repeatable processes. That is, if I utilize uh, either text to columns or Flash Fill and my data changes, then I would uh, have to go back and rerun uh, those tools. I'm certainly looking in this example for a what I would call a repeatable and a refreshable process. So if I'm indeed uh, focusing on repeatable and refreshable processes, another approach that we could take would be to build formulas that utilize certain Excel functions, uh, for example, the left function and the mid function and the right function and others. And if I utilize formulas, then I do indeed have refreshable, repeatable processes because every time my data changes, well, then, of course, the formulas are going to automatically update. The challenge with that approach, however, is if you've ever gone down that path, you know that those formulas can become quite complex depending upon the data that we're looking at. More specifically, if our data is of differing widths, maybe I've got city, state, and zip code all in one column, and obviously the, the two-character state abbreviation and a five-character zip code, that's going to be consistent, but the city names themselves are very likely to be of differing widths, and that introduces a fairly significant level of complexity into that process. So what we're going to do in this example, then, is learn how we can use Excel's uh, uh, the, the Power Query feature, I'm sorry, uh, utilize Excel's Power Query feature to split data into multiple columns quickly and easily and very specifically to see how it does indeed create this repeatable and refresh refreshable process for us. Now, as you can see, I have jumped over to our data set that we're going to use for the initial example here. It's a relatively simple data set. Um, the volume of data here is really not important. That is to say, whether this is uh, 10 rows or 10,000 rows, the process for building this data transformation uh, would be exactly the same, no matter the volume of data. In this uh, example, obviously, we have city, state, and zip code. And the big challenge that we face here is that the city names are all differing widths. Uh, so, so that means if I want this repeatable, refreshable process, then I'm going to either A, have to build formulas, which I'm not a real big fan of, or B, uh, perhaps use Power Query, which is what we're about to do uh, to complete this task. So what we will do is begin by clicking anywhere in this data set, and it's not really necessary to select the entire data set, but just click anywhere in the data set, and then notice from the Data tab of my ribbon, I am going to choose From, Table, and Range. Um, now, that's a shortcut. I could actually get to that same option by clicking on Get Data, but since I have a shortcut available to me, I'll just go ahead and take advantage of the shortcut. And this is going to take the data and load it into Power Query and then simultaneously also open up the Power Query Editor. As you see, the Power Query Editor is opening for us right now. The data just got linked into Power Query, and we're now ready to go in and begin our split processes. Now, if you'll notice on the Home tab of the Power Query ribbon, there's an option right over here uh, entitled Split Column. And that, of course, is the option that we're going to work with. Now, in this case, we are going to choose to split the data by a delimiting character, and that delimiting character, as you see, is going to be a comma. There's certainly other options there if we needed the other options, uh, colon, uh, equal sign, semicolon, or we could even uh, enter whatever uh, the delimiting character is. But in this case, our first illustration, just simply using a comma uh, will, will suffice. And we're going to say that we want to split at each occurrence of the delimiter. Uh, so if there were multiple commas in that column, it would split every time it saw a, uh, an additional comma. Uh, we obviously have the option of saying leftmost or rightmost, but in this case, at each occurrence of the delimiter will suffice. 
When I click OK, as you will see, now our data has been split into two columns. I have one column that has the city uh, left in it, and then a second column that has the state and the zip code. We're not done yet. We need to take that second column that has the state and the zip code in it, and we need to split that into two separate columns, one for the state and one for the zip code only. So let's select that column just by clicking anywhere on it, and then let's turn around once again and say that we want to split the column, and we want to again split by a delimiter. Now, my delimiter here could, will be, in fact, a space, but notice that I could also split based on the number of characters. That is, because each of the state abbreviations happens to be two characters, I could choose, if I so desired, to split uh, based on the number of characters. But again, in this case, we're going to say by a delimiter. So let's go in and choose that particular option. And then we're going to say we want to split based on the space. And we want to split, again, at each occurrence of the delimiter. Click OK. And now, momentarily, as you see, we got actually two additional columns above and beyond uh, the, the column that we already started with. So why do we end up with that blank column in the middle? Well, I, I'm not going to take you back and show it to you, but actually there was a space in front of the state name. And that because of the space in front of the state, um, it, it, it treated that as its own column and then took the state and the zip code and broke, the, broke those out separately. All we have to do now is go in and delete this unnecessary column just by choosing to remove the columns. And I'll to, I want to remove that column, of course. And so now I indeed have my data in three different, um, three different columns. And I'll then just simply retitle each of these columns. Let's take the first one and call it city. Let's jump over here to the second one and call that state. And then let's go to the third one and call that zip code, or just zip for short. Upon clicking now close and load, we see that momentarily, anyway, we will see that we have our completed data transformation. There it is. Our completed data transformation such that now all of our data sits in three separate columns. Now, why is this approach a better approach than perhaps any of the others that, that we could use? Let's go back to the original data set. And in this original data set, let's now go down and take these three additional rows of data and let's copy and paste those or cut and paste those and place them into the original data set. So now my data has changed. And since the data has changed, I want my results to change. All I have to do to update my results is simply come, come to our results uh, table right-click anywhere on the results table and click refresh. And upon doing so, now you see the advantage of this repeatable and refreshable process. We've been doing a number of videos, a number of tips on Power Query, and I hope you understand why it's one of the best tools Microsoft has ever incorporated into Excel. Very flexible, very useful. We're constantly uncovering new ways of using this tool. In this example, we're showing you how you can utilize Power Query to split data into multiple columns. I hope this has been useful for you. Please stop by our channel again at some point down the future. We're continually adding new tips, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, uh, provide you with some information that you're looking for. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and on behalf of everyone at K2 Enterprises, we look forward to serving you again in the very near future. Have a great day.